Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gamers, somebody me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Tangled Stars. Also, Happy New Year's, everybody. Hope y'all are gonna have a wonderful day. I'm heading to a Japanese steakhouse later on today. Gonna have some fun with my family. Gonna drink some sake and have a grand old time. Gonna be a nice big send-off party for me when I'm because I'm, I'm moving on the 5th. I know, it's coming up, guys. Oh, it feels surreal, but anyway, alright, alright, so y'all, if you haven't already, go watch my, uh, drunk video today of Santa Lucia, uh, I've been told it's rather entertaining, <laughs> I was, uh, unsure of if I should upload it or not, but I figured, you know, what the hell, you guys like seeing me being awkward and such, so, why not, it'd be something different, anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and just jump right back in, Alarm Chan, you were up, and let's go. Okay, don't worry, I just heard the blade. Ah, he, he coughs up blood. Huh. You're too young to understand, but I love someone I shouldn't. He hated it, started throwing words around. I was about to call the police, but I wouldn't have been able to either way. He looks at me weakly and pats my cheek with his soft, now cold paw, while someone, while somehow mustering up a smile. I hold it there and sob as his eyes lose their glint, and his breathing stops. His hand melts away into a dark liquid. The floor stretches out infinitely and turns to black. The buildings shrink into nothingness, and the skies turn dark as night. Everything is just black. And infinite. I automatically hug my knees to my chest, scared of whatever all of this is. It's my fault! It's my fault! It's my fault! He died because of me! I scream, and I, cr I scream a cry full of pain and guilt. Yes. A sharp whisper bellows in my ear, a voice which couldn't come from neither other kin nor human. I turn around and see nothing, but in the distance, but in the distance, claws were lazily scraping the floor. Whatever that thing is, it started humming in a low tune, and it's getting closer. My stupid legs start to finally work, and I start running. No idea where I, no idea where, but I start running. Even though I'm sprinting now, the creature is still lazily walking, but is still advancing incredibly quickly. What is this? Where am I? Why does this feel familiar? I keep going and going and going until one thought seems to come to the surface. This is when it started. This is why it started. It's my fault. I start to slow down to a stop. The creature starts to speed up, however, almost galloping my way. It can take me. I'm nothing but a murderer. It shrieks demonically and as it lunges at me and... Yeah! Ah! Ah! I wake up in a cold sweat, looking fr around frantically to see where I am. I'm still in my bed in Rome while Andy is sipping his coffee on the balcony, with the door swung wide open, letting the cool morning breeze tickle my face. Why is he up so early? Out of the corner of my eye, something brightly colored catches my attention. A large travel bag was filled to the brim with neatly folded clothes. Ah, oh, that's right, the two weeks went right by us. But today's the day of departure. So much happened during these days we, During these days we, we spent abroad. Firstly, we met Alder, a nice wolf we hung out with every day after we bumped into each other literally in the Colosseum. He showed us around the city, introduced us to a lot of nice dishes and traditions, and nonetheless, we had fun getting to know each other and spending time together. I'll be honest, this holiday was just what I needed to get away from... from... Oh, Jonah! Good morning! Hey, enjoy, enjoying the morning, I see? Yeah, I would love to live here! He turns around to look at the outside world. It's beaming with life and with nice people with beautiful sights. When I retire, I'm definitely moving here. We haven't even finished our studies, though. One can dream, can he not? Right. I get up and stretch, feeling my bones wake up from their slumber. I'm gonna finish getting ready, and after you get changed, we'll get going. Got it. Ah, oh, back to normalcy, I suppose. I make my way to our seats, and place the luggage in the space above us, and plop myself in the seat next to the window. Alter joins not too soon after, and sits down in the middle seat. Andy slowly creeps to his seat, shaking slightly. Is everything okay, Andy? No. I hate planes. So much. You'll be alright, we have Alder now. He has me. I glance at Alder's strong arms and back at Andy, and they both look back at me with confusion. N never mind, you'll get it soon enough. Andy straps himself in, triple checking his belt for some reason. Soon after, the plane starts to rock gently once again, take once again, taking off. After a few mem moments, I hear a, sh a, s a slight shuffling to my left. I think we can all guess what's happening. Alder looks down to his left, then at Andy, who's got his eyes squeezed shut. Um, Andy, uh, that's my arm. Andy's fingers dug deep into Alder's arm fur, but he seemed to not feel any pain from it. Okay. Could you let go? No? Okay. What the hell is this man's arm made of? Are his nerves made of steel? 
My confusion is interrupted by the gentle chime coming through as the staff grab our attention. While they go through the rules and instructions, I take a look outside of the fluffy blanket of clouds once again. Man, I'll be... oof. I'll be seeing that again real soon. For those of you who don't fly, who have never flown before, it's quite an amazing feeling. I've flown quite a bit in my life. Um, when I was dating a guy back in New York, the, the guy I was with for nine years, um, I'd always go visit him in New York, and I would always take the plane, and I always loved it. I loved flying. It, it felt incredible. Yeah, it can be scary at times, but, you know, looking life. Anyway. I wonder what it feels like to be a cloud. A large mass of floating nothingness, having beautiful sights both below and above. How ethereal. What? Oh no. Huh? On the far end of the wing, I noticed something which was not there before. Some sort of object. It lied perfectly still in the moving airplane somehow. The more I look at it, the more the bad of a bad feeling I get. And along with that, the noise of the airplane seems to slowly subside. I can't take my eyes off of it. Um. Oh! Oh. Everything around me becomes dead quiet. The, the thing starts to become easier to see. And now that I look at it again, it looks like... Oh. Oh no. I feel my core tremble and a shiver, and a shiver slithers down my spine. My breathing starts to pick up speed, pick up in speed. My eyes start to water, and down my forehead slides down a pinball of cold sweat. It's him, the man from back then, lying on the wing, lifeless, dead, because of me. Help me, somebody. My voice is full of fear, weak and broken, and it just and it goes just above a whisper in the quiet space around me. I feel isolated. My eyes won't come off the body. Please, I'm scared. Jonah. Alder grabbed my shoulders and looked into my eyes with a gaze of pure worry. Jonah, are you okay? You started shaking and breathing weirdly and saying stuff like, "Help me." I look into his eyes and take a long second. No, I'm not okay. But it'll have to wait. I'll tell you some other time. I muster up the strength to give him a smile, but it doesn't convince him the slightest bit. He shakes his head and sighs, whilst taking his hands off my shoulders. All right, just know that I'm here for you. I nod, and this time choose, choose just to just grab my earphones and listen to some music to distract me. For the rest of the flight, nothing else happens, thankfully. After we arrived back in Rayville, Andy had to go off home quickly due to some errand he had to run. Now I'm standing next to Alder, waiting. No idea what for, though. Well, it sure was a nice and eventful holiday we had. Heh, <laughs> no kidding. Sad that it ended so fast. We should do this again someday. I turn to him. I'd like that. I give him a nice smile, which he returns. Oh, that reminds me. He pulls out his phone and swipes it around. I thought I might give you my number, so we keep in touch. Oh, uh, sure. I pick up mine as well, and we quickly exchange, exchange contacts. Well then, I'll, uh, see you around? Yeah, I I'll see ya. But we don't walk away yet. We just stand there, looking at each other, not saying a thing. But it's not awkward, it's just a moment. Of appreciation? Of friendship? No idea. After a while, we do, however, break off, as the winds carry us to the close, bright future. Oh man. Wait, is that it? For now? Aw, oh, man. Is that it? Oh, no, okay. Ooh. Cha oh, next chapter. I wonder how many chapters there are. I'm curious. Almus. Emerald leaves were dancing gracefully in the sky, carried gently by the soft wind ever so often accompanied by the few last cherry petals of the season. The setting sun, a golden mantle lying across the land, was giving everything it touched a rich color. The occasional cat could be seen basking in its beauty through the blades of fresh grass. I myself was enjoying my little sunbath, not paying too much attention to the professor speaking. It feels just perfect, not too warm, and a little zephyr could be felt entering the classroom through the window. A little human scrawling through? Outside you could hear the vegetation thrive, branches rustling, birds singing. Dogs barking in the distance, cars driving past. It was all it was all a harmonious symphony that called one's soul greatly. Nothing could break this peaceful atmosphere, except one particular blonde young man. Woo! Summer break! Ow! 
He smack fills the classroom as the teacher hits the top of Andy's head with a ruler. Sit down, Mr. Flavian. The bell has yet to ring, said the teacher, just as the bell ironically cut him off. He sighs and goes back to his desk while dismissing the class for the summer. Jonah! And my quiet bubble is burst completely. You ready for a sunny break? He doesn't even let me respond as he grabs my arm, pulling me outside. I have so many plans for the summer! We're practically running through the corridors, our backpacks jumping up and down with our movements. I start to wonder, how did we get here in the blink of an eye? One second, Alder and I were departing. The next, we're here, four months later. I guess, as always, time flies by when you pay little attention to it. And time seems to be the best medicine for wounds, as I've been healing quite nicely after the... date. Even that thing inside my head wasn't as loud anymore. Since I started meeting Alder more, things got way better. Ah, talking about Alder. Such a great guy. Sure, he's very serious at most times, but it's nice when I see him let his guard down when he's around me. It makes me smile like some idiot. Hey. Speaking of the devil, he was leaning against a railing just outside the front entrance, waiting for us. Despite the fact the university he goes to is quite far from ours, he still comes to greet us as often as he can. And he called him sweet many times for that, but he denies it every time, saying he happened to pass by. Afternoon, how's it going? Hi! He stretches for a second before coming over to us. It's going. Glad we have some free time for, for quite a while now. Maybe we can finally do that thing we said we would. Ah, that's right. We never were able to fit, fit that into our schedule. Do what exactly? Nothing, nothing. Just a little trip. I wink at Alder and he smirks. Ooh, I get it. He giggles quietly. You're going on a date to... No. No. Oh. I'll tell you about it some other time, Andy. It's something big that you'd miss on. Don't worry. Andy groans and slashes a bit. Fine, keep your secrets. Anyways. There's this new ice cream place which opened not too far from here. Alder turns his head my way. Want to go check it out together, Jonah? Wouldn't hurt to. It's quite hot today, so it would be it would be it would be to my benefit. Then it's settled. Andy straightens up. Hey guys, what about me? Are you just gonna leave me out? No, it's just that you invite yourself with to wherever we go, so there's no reason to ask you anymore. Now that's just cruel. Well, I had plans anyway, so. Both Alder and I reply with okay in unison. Andy pouts and looks at his watch. Look at the time! I need to go to someone who actually requires my presence! He turns on his heel and starts to walk away with a little spring in his step. What is Andy planning? Well, should we go now? Let's. As we walk along the sidewalk, I see countless people, both human and other kin of all ages, walking around with different things that caught your, that caught your eye. Balloons, cotton candy, ice cream, large plushies, anything that would remind you of your childhood. A common sentiment spread across kin and beliefs. What's up with all that? I gestured towards the passing people. Oh, the festivities. This year's summer festival started today. I heard this one's particularly special. It's going to last a week and it'll be one of the largest ones in the country. To, and I quote, celebrate a year since the other kin and the humans made peace in both mind and in law. So they're using the one year anniversary of cross kin relationships being legal as a means to increase their popularity. Pretty much. I scoff and look away from the people. But that's okay. It's still a festival, so we can still have fun. We? Oh yeah, I wanted to ask if maybe you'd like to go to the festival with me. I mean, sure, I'd love to, but what about Andy? I already asked him, but when I did, he told me he's taking part in it, so he can't be hanging out with us. But we can still visit his stand and just spend time with him, I guess. Sure, that works. Wait, how come he's taking part in it? What's his role? That, I don't know. He wouldn't tell me. I guess we just have to wait and see. He nods, and just as we finish our conversation, we reach the front of the ice cream shop. As we enter, as we enter the local, as we enter the local store, a breeze, a cold breeze runs its chilly, delicate hands through my hair, getting rid of the discomforting heat from the outside. Oh, hello! From across the room, a short, cheery red panda waves at us enthusiastically. In the span of a second, she rushes across the empty space to greet us. Wow, she is little. Oh, hello! Welcome to Frosty Dreams, where we catch those flavors there that are out of this world and freeze them in your soul to last an eternity. Wow, what a intense fucking company lo uh, slogan, Jesus. <laughs> hey there, welcome, welcome to the Soul Ice Cream Shop. We will give, we will fulfill your soul and all your needs with our culinary delectables. Okay. <laughs> 
I'm Maple, and I'll be your guide and waitress today. As you can see, we don't have many customers, so for the f so for the few which we do have, uh, we chose to give a personal insight on what we have to offer. She smiles in such a gentle, yet energetical manner. You could say her smile might, might combat Andy's. It just might. Follow me, gentlemen. We start to walk behind the Red Panda, admiring the atmosphere as we pass. But though there are not too many customers, the workers behind the counter seem to be working hard. Appointing different jobs to each other, switching between one another, their teamwork is solid. Their teamwork was solid, and it shows. Here! Uh... Maple gestures towards the large board above our heads, which held the menu. We have a gigantic selection of flavors which you should try, each holding a taste completely different than the other. As I scan through the options, I see many combinations I've never seen before. Eucalyptus Spiral, Passion Fruit Bomb, Dragon Flame Bubbles. That sounds interesting. Something tells me we're going to visit this place quite often. Of course, there are menus on the tables as well, but if you wish, you could make an order now. I look at Alder and he shrugs. Sure, though you know what flavor I'm getting. I start as he, as he nods towards the hibiscus hurricane flavor. Of course. Well, I'm gonna have a. Uh, I look through the options again, and a flavor seems to speak to my. It seems to pique my interest. Moonlit delight. What's that? Ooh, good choice. Good choice. It consists of a blend of coconut, vanilla, and a hint of lychee syrup. Ooh, that sounds delicious. All right. Well, we'll have that and the hibiscus hurricane, please. Could I have a name, please? Jonah. Noted. You can take a seat whenever you, wherever you wish, and I'll bring you your order as soon as it's done. I nod with a smile and start to lead Alder to a table next to the window. As we sit down, he places his chin on the table with a long, tired sigh. Hey, you okay? I whispered to him in a delicate manner. Yeah, I'm alright. Just really tired. Today was a pain. Anything in particular tired you out? Not really, no. My projects were all due today, and it was just stressful overall. Worked really hard on them, so I, so I better get some good grades. I'm sure you will. After all, you're really gifted at photography. As he was quite as he was quite close to me and his head was on the table, I subconsciously started to play with his hair. He grumbled. I don't know. Come on, we all love your portfolio. You want me to start listing the things I love about your photography? Please don't. You capture the world in the and only the, you capture the world only in the way that you see it, and you see it to be the most delicate and precious thing in the universe. Your pictures are always so lively and full of color, and they always hold a deep meaning. Which, overall, makes you a very talented photographer and a very precious person. Hmm? He looks up at me without moving his head, while my hand was still in his hair. Hmm? I feel something brushing softly on my back every few seconds. Alder closes his eyes. <laughs> he always liked when I play around with his hair. He'd always fall asleep from it. I take a small look behind me, and I realize that the soft, bl the soft brushing was nothing else but his tail. It was wagging slowly from side to side. He's like, like an older brother who acts so tough, but would always let his guard down when the younger one would spend some time with him. I get that feeling all the time. Here's your order, sirs! Alder sits back up and I take my hand back. That's so cute. Oh. That's so cute! Hmm? Did you say something? Ah, uh, uh, yes, here's your ice cream! She places them in front of us and smiles once again. Let me know if you need anything else. Enjoy! Alright, guys and gals, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pause it right here. Thank you all so much for watching. Hope you all have a wonderful, awesome New Year's Day, and may we all have a great year, too! Anyway, I love you all. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye!